Greetings, Minecrafters, and welcome to another discussion on the Fast Mind Club. Today will be probably be a pretty short one. It's about myths about ADHD. And probably the biggest one, oh wait, I gotta introduce myself first. I'm Dr. Kimberly Quinn, and I am here to help you become the boss of your thoughts and live your very best life. Okay, now here we go. I am once again on Champlain's very gorgeous campus on a bluebird of a day. And uh, yeah, so let's get going. Probably the biggest one is when the judges out there say that ADHD isn't a thing. You know, I just, I have to hold back, you know, really be it be in a day of my life or maybe a week. And then if you go backwards in time, you know, as a little kid, teenager, you wouldn't be saying that if you know if you were in my shoes or any but any of the other members of the Fast Club members, Fast Club members' shoes. True with anything, fill in the blank. It kind of drives me a little nuts when you know somebody is. And I have these talks with my students frequently. When someone will uh, you know misuse a um, a label, saying oh so and so she's so by you know she's so bipolar you know because she's a little moody. You know being that being that person's mind. You know, when somebody with, you know, bipolar one could literally get on a plane and fly to France and not remember it, be in their life, you know, it just before you go saying things like that. And, you know, somebody's a little fidgety or, or talks too much or interrupts a couple of times and says, oh, they're so ADHD, you know, hush up unless you're really a, an authentic Fast Club member and know, what's, know what it's like, you don't have to live with it for a little while. So those people that say it's not a thing. Some guy even wrote a whole book on how it's not a thing and probably not somebody I'd really like to do lunch with. Although I shouldn't say that because maybe I really would want to do lunch with him and just find out, you know, why he thinks like that. Okay, another one, you know, is that uh, it's usually the old timers that think this because it's, it's changed, but that it's only for kids. And for crying out loud, there are plenty of us around who uh, are living proof that it's not only for kids. Right, and of course, I'm at a fabulous 56. I remember when, um, you know, it was just the Dennis the Menace stereotype that you know you had to be a rambunctious little boy with a slingshot in your back pocket, and that's who, you know, was that's who was you know the ADHD crew of the Fast Mind Club, and obviously, you know, girls have it too, women have it too, seasoned women have it too, and you know, it's really an equal opportunity employer actually, and. Uh, yeah, and it just, you know, it's just, you know, sort of bothersome. And also the whole thing where it's more of a boy thing than a girl thing. That isn't true. And girls are rapidly catching up and women are rapidly catching up. And it's not that we've changed. They're, you know, people doing the diagnosing are sort of figuring out that the brains of genetic females and genetic males are not the same. There's wiring differences. And there's, of course, the inattentive type, the impulsive type, and the combined type. So a little girl who's maybe inattentive and staring out the, the classroom, you know, door, you know, window, because she sees somebody go by in a nice outfit and then her mind just went out the door and around the block for the entire class, thinking about how she's going to try to find that outfit online. You know, not as apt to get noticed as being in the principal's office, right? So that's another one. We have um, bad parenting. Bad parenting does not cause ADHD. You might have bad parents and lots of other stuff can be their fault for sure um, but not that because ADHD is genetic it's genetic now can bad parenting <coughs> excuse me exacerbate the symptoms of, of ADHD and what it looks like absolutely I'm actually grow growing less and less fond of the word symptoms actually <coughs> excuse me it's a little dryness on this gorgeous campus um, I had a student say I think it was just the fall semester of this year saying, you know, let's talk about what it looks like. I'd much rather say, what does it look like in reality? Instead of, you know, out of the book of labels, the DSM-6. So it just, it looks differently on, on boys and girls. And now there's a whole new crew coming into uh, joining the, not joining or acknowledging that they're part of the Fast Mind Club in later life. I think I'm going to do a whole separate thing on that because it just needs to be a whole separate thing. So bad parents can escalate us because we need a different type of nurturing than neurotypicals, a different type of just the whole parenting thing. We need a different type of 
you know, strategy and different, our spirits need a different type of nurturing for sure, our minds. And another one, sugar. That's just a big, you know, sugar doesn't cause it and doesn't make it worse. And in fact, a lot of times well-meaning parents, you know, completely detox their kids off sugar. And I'm not saying load them up on Snicker bars, you know, for all day. I, that's not a good idea either. Although the prefrontal cortex benefits from sugar. And so if, if, you know, a college student or a younger kid is going in, you know, for an exam or something like that, it's a really good idea, actually. Often they don't let you take snacks in if it's a standardized test, but, you know, to, you know, give them some sugar. And of course, you know, the body doesn't know the difference between a Snicker bar and an apple as far as sugar goes. It didn't say it had to be unhealthy, but to keep kids away from sugar is really, uh, you know, like anything, moderation, right? Um, and plus, you know, when we totally keep a child, totally restrict them so much, you know, obviously the first thing they're going to want to do when they get any kind of control is, you know, go out and like, you know, binge on, you know, ice cream sundaes or something. But it, it's, it's keeping sugar away totally is not really a very good idea. But in addition to the prefrontal cortex, enjoying sugar to focus, to actually concentrate, um, it, it, it also, by entirely withholding sugar, just further supports that thing where the child is different in some way or less than in some way. Like, how come other kids are, aren't completely kept off sugar? So it's just, I don't know, it's just balance, balance, right? And then, really, um, one, of the, one of the ones that is even, one of the most ridiculous ones is uh, that you know, we outgrow ADHD, we don't outgrow ADHD, we don't outgrow autism, we don't outgrow diabetes, really, even type 2 can be managed with a super healthy diet, but you still got to watch it all the time, right? We don't outgrow having brown eyes, you know, in ADHD, it's like, you know, having brown eyes are born with it, it is genetic, it is genetic, and so we do not outgrow it, it can, we can, um, it, some of the symptoms or what it looks like, can appear to go away, but really what that is, is chronologically we get a little better at managing it, but it doesn't go away. We just have maybe a little more of an ability to say, oh, I really feel like I want to interrupt right now, um, and, and being able to stave that off a little bit, but there's going to be another time when we really can't, and like, oh, man, didn't mean to interrupt the boss in that meeting in front of everybody. You know, I was just so excited because I read a more current article, and da 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 and so it, it's, it, it, it doesn't, it does not go away. We do not outgrow it. We just get a little bit better at managing it, and we occasionally fall off that wagon when we get frustrated. For me, personally, um, my hardest emotion to manage is frustration. I go from zero to 100. So I do a lot of just like talk, you know, self-talk, and obviously every day is different. You know, you wake up and hit the ground running, have your OJ, you had a good night's sleep. You're gonna be more, better able even no neurotypical, same thing. Better able to manage the frustrations of your day when you've had we have all that in place. Well, exercise, everything's going well. Versus, you know, you have the flu or you just you know didn't have a good go the whole week or whatever like that. So, um, no, we don't grow out of it. That's just ridiculous. And uh, what else do I want to say about this? Oh, and also the age, the age of ADHD. Not everybody has the age. And we're calling it high energy, right? Because we changed it. ADHD is a misnomer. And so a lot of times people say, oh, even my child, my child doesn't have the age. You're not necessarily so sure. And with adults, uh, what happens, it happens in kids also. With, with, with adults, what happens is they might have even been diagnosed with the age. And it's like, oh, it went away. But it really didn't. The age is also on the inside. And a lot of people who are not well-versed in what the f we fast minders deal with every day, don't realize that the the what is called hyperactive is very much internal so if you're seeing it on the outside of your child teenage or adult or seasoned adult just be them for a day or two or three or four or five or a week because if you're seeing it it's it's 10 to 20 times more on the on, on the inside of that skin than it is if you're if you're actually seeing the high energy expressed so empathy is good strategies are good lots of exercise is really good um, which brings me to the last thing, which is, this part isn't really a myth, it's just, it's just another way that we're misunderstood. And people don't always mean it. It's not like the judges are always these evil demons. Sometimes they just are just ignorant. They don't get it. And I would say many people, I've had it so much in my life with this, many people think that sitting down 
is relaxing and it's not for everybody in fact I think sitting's overrated to be truthful now do I enjoy sitting at a nice dinner with aviance out it's definitely by the ocean but even in my own living room um, with my husband and kids and sitting in that sense is good and lunch and on the beach for a while I would probably get up and run very early but relaxation that isn't sitting sitting down and just to sit and watch TV or something is not anything but relaxing for me it just isn't you know I can watch a movie if it's engaging I don't go to the movies well not yet close because of the Rona but pre-Rona the whole family kind of because we always do you know, we do most things as a family I finally just got pardoned oh look at the half moon it's beautiful wow I just got I got pardoned from it because it was miserable for me to at home it just seems different when I we used to sit in the movies all the crackly uh, popcorn chewers and like bags of whatever and it definitely with people would talk I have such a pet peeve with people talking in movies because like I didn't buy a ticket to hear you talk you know what I mean like it's just annoying but you had all those uh, sounds in there and and sitting for an hour and a half and I just was miserable so I finally got pardoned but you know the whole point is that you know the empathy thing is good um, I relax when I'm in motion even walking around now this is so enjoyable for me to walk around and just you know have a conversation with all of you and skiing is relaxing and running is relaxing and walking is relaxing walking with friends and talking about deep cool stuff Wa uh, walking around talking about the Yankees who just won yay um, that's all relaxing for me you know sports stuff hiking outside nature all relaxing sitting on a couch you know watching a movie especially when I'm interested not relaxing going to the movies even the air conditioning on a hundred degree day not relaxing it's so frustrating for me so it's just important to um, just remember the differences just remember the myths that are out there and debunk the myths I love to debunk the myths fast mind club members unite this is Kimberly Quinn signing off from the gorgeous Champlain College